My friend, my friend, we're going to be talking about the harmonic minor scale, which means we're going to be playing through the eyes of C major. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished C. So A minor would be our naturally occurring Aeolian scale, giving us one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and then one. When we play our harmonic, we only alter one note for that natural seven. So we've got one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, natural seven, and one. When we use that, it changes fundamentally that one note, that tone, and gives it more of a resolution towards the one. So we use it to actually add tension and then resolve that tension. <laughs> We're not, however, talking about that mode, nor the second third. We're talking about the fifth mode that's derived from playing one, two, three, four, five. When you play that same mode and then you keep going up the fretboard, we achieve the note that we start on. So if we start on the one, two, three, four, fifth note of that scale and continue that scale, we get the next mode, which we're going to be calling frigid. Phrygian dominant or Phrygian flat two, flat six. If we're looking at it through the Berkeley School of Music type of ideology, we would be calling it a Mixolydian because it exhibits that flat nine, flat 13 kind of feel. So concept we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna just play a C major, turn it into a C minor, and then play our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, which is our, you guessed it, our minor, but it's not our natural Aeolian minor. It has our natural note here, the seventh, making it a harmonic minor. If we were to look at C as being the fifth of any chord, which I hope you know that, watch, F, G, A, B flat, C. If we were in the key of F, we would have C mixolydian. Hence, when we say C mixolydian, this type of mode could use the mixo, which has these notes, C flat two, we're gonna have a natural third, a natural four, natural five, flat six, flat seven, and then a one. No matter where we play these notes on this fretboard, we're gonna always, uh, where's that, uh, G, A flat, B flat, C. We're always gonna achieve that type of feeling and it's super groovy to have like the, uh, So what I like to do with this kind of movement, this kind of chord uh, is a throw it over, of course, any minor because it has that kind of minor kind of. <laughs> Fits in quite well, but because you have that major third, that dominant or that altered note there, you can use this over a major scale. Boy, does it build a lot of tension. I hope this one thrown into your repertoire of different scales and modes goes into your practice as well. When we practice a major scale, it looks something along the lines of this, uh, C major. Uh, let's do five note variations, four note variations, three note variations using alternating picking, meaning down and up on a string. Uh, second finger, because we're only utilizing one, two, three, four. These frets are the fingers that my fingers are going to play on. These are what I call spider exercises. A lot of people call them a lot of different things. What I do is I use them to warm up my fingers when I first start playing for the day. It helps to accent one note at a time and explore different rhythmic patterns. What happens is when you devote time to practicing a scale like this mode, uh, let's take it from the C again. You work on multiple ways to get those same notes out with the different fingerings. And what happens is if you practice that like a, uh, those are three note variations. That's a five note variation. So if I was gonna wanna do a melodic phrasing using this mode, doing a six note variation, five note variation, four note variation, five note variation, I would have something like, da, 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 da. It would follow the pattern of using something 
inside that mode over the top of a melody. And then if I'm just trying to derive a melody out of not having a set chord structure and I'm just, as you would say, doodling, the doodles generate concepts. So if I sat here and did the way that sounds. <laughs> so why not make that the major theme of some sort of groove? The concept is I would record a little ditty of that, call it the nugget or the head or the groove, and go back and just kind of layer something over that would sound fun over the top of it. Since I know it has that half step, gee whiz, I could use my full tone scales. I could use my half whole scales. I could use diminished altered. There's a bunch of modes, but this mode sticks out to me as a sore thumb of pulling the air towards that that major third. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, thumbs up, subscribe, throw a comment below, and look forward to the next video.